I'm not sure, folks, if we all fully realise what a gift we have here in Ireland. And of course I'm talking about the Knock Shrine in County Mayo, which of course we all know houses the beautiful white marble representations of the apparition from August 1879, where St. Joseph, St. John, the angelic forces, and of course Our Lady appeared with the Lamb of God standing alive on the altar. And once again, everybody, as with so many of the great Marian apparition sites throughout our world, she appears with her divine son, showcasing to the church and to all the world that how intricately linked she is with Jesus and, of course, with the Eucharist. I mean, think of it, everybody. Um, every one of Our Lady's great sanctuaries, Marian sanctuaries throughout the whole world, um, her apparition sites through all the world, she's never... How would you say? She never venerated in isolation. Never. She brings all the pilgrims that comes to the Marian sites throughout the world, uh, she brings them to the foot of the altar, where obviously those who go to there, those places, they gain great graces from her divine son. Wherever Jesus is, Our Lady is sure to be there, uh, and vice versa. I mean, folks, at the end of the day, we're talking about a mother who climbed the hill of Calvary with her son as he carried a cross. She's with him from day one, all the way up to his last breath on the cross. That is some, that's, that's some link. A completely inseparable bond of love. This weekend, folks, it's often called Vocation Sunday. And as some of you may know, I, I'm, I was asked by the Archbishop last year to become one of the vocation directors for the Dublin Diocese. And I've had the opportunity to meet with loads of guys who uh, have expressed a real genuine interest in becoming a priest for the Dublin Diocese. And every single one of them that I've met so far over the past year or so, they have certain things in common. There's this golden thread going through each and every one of them, which is very, very interesting. And all of them that I've spoken to have a very, very deep devotion to Our Lady and the Eucharist. Those two things in particular. Those two pillars are constant with them. And it reminds me, folks, of what Mother Teresa spoke about when she was in the United States back in the 90s. Her messages, if you look at her messages and her talks when she went to the United States, they're, they're very much centered on Our Lady and the Eucharist. The two pillars which she pointed out were part and parcel, the mainstay of that great order, um, which has given, as we know, phenomenal success to helping those of the poorest poor in this world that we live in. And it's the same thing with St. John Bosco, when he had that great dream of the ship as the church in huge tumultuous waves. There was two pillars he saw guiding the ship of the church, Our Lady and the Eucharist. Those two things are the golden thread all through since the moment Christ was born in this world. Um, and if you notice, everybody, where devotion to Mary decreases, what goes down with it? Belief in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. Um, that's why, folks, the Protestant Reformation back in the 1500s, when they dropped the authority and the power of Our Lady in Christian life, what went with that? belief in the presence of Christ in the Eucharist. The two of them go hand in hand. Um, you can't have Mary without Jesus, and you can't have Jesus without Mary. As simple as that, folks, is my point today. She's the mother at the end of the day who stood by the cross as her son died. Um, from the moment of his conception, all the way to his dying breath on the cross. And let's not forget, everybody, Mary was also assumed to heaven bodily, just as Christ was raised bodily. So it's no wonder the two of them are constantly appearing in this world to you and me, who are physical bodies as well. So it's not surprising they come, come, come together. See, everybody, when we ignore the woman of faith, which of course is Mary, who assumed the heaven bodily, then our faith in the real presence of Jesus is going to falter and fall at big time it did with our Protestant brothers and sisters. So even now, many of our own Catholic friends that we all know, they obviously don't believe that Christ is truly present in the Eucharist, such as the, 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 the little or no respect or reverence shown in this sanctuary, these holy areas. And folks, you know, when I stood with some of my uh, brother's priests a couple of months ago at Knock, um, at the Apparition Gable, we prayed together the rosary, and we also consecrated ourselves to Our Lady, our priesthood, for the rest of our lives, and made the promise that every first Saturday of every month, we'd celebrate Mass in her honour until the day we die. And that's what I'm doing here today and since then. I do it, folks, because I truly believe that an increase in marine devotion will increase in a community's faith and love of Jesus in the Eucharist, um, which, of course, is our source and summit of our Christian faith. 
Mary must never, ever be worshipped in isolation of Jesus. If we don't have Christ, folks, at the centre of what we do and how we think and how we operate, then we're doomed. I mean, the great temptation, as you and I both know, the church at the moment, is to do initiatives and plans and great renewal works, etc., on our own steam. We fall, folks, into the hands of the devil when we divorce our plans and our actions from Christ. Pure and simple. As the great Saint Francis, who we know is always venerated for love of nature, but his first and primary love was Jesus in the Eucharist. You read his writings. They're mine third parties. Read his own writings. He never did anything. And I mean he, nothing. He never did a single thing without first consulting Jesus in the Eucharist. Never. And Our Lady, everybody, she will always and everywhere constantly guide our souls to her loving Saviour. She's our true companion among the male life. She's the one who stands with us in this great valley of tears, like I said, where just as she gave her own son strength when he fell under the weight of the cross to get up and to keep going, she'll offer us the very same help when we ask of it upon her. So friends, let's today ask for her graces for an increase of faith in her son Jesus.